This is Eric White. Today I'm going to give an end-to-end -end overview of the open packaging conventions. There is enough information to cover here that I've broken this screencast up into two parts. These two screencasts are part of an introductory series on OpenXML development. In previous screencasts, I gave a very general introduction to OpenXML. I talked about the tools that you'll want to use when you work with OpenXML. I talked about the various scenarios that you will encounter when developing with OpenXML. And I talked about a number of development techniques that you can use when writing OpenXML programs. The Open Packaging Conventions, or OPC for short, is the standard that OpenXML uses to store the XML in these zip files. As most of you probably already know, OpenXML documents are really just zip files with XML inside of them, but they're not just zip files. There is some additional structure overlaid over the zip files. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a simple OpenXML document. I will right click and create a new Microsoft Word document. I'll call it test. I'll open the document and I'll insert some random text into the document. I'll save it and close it. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the name of this file and I'm going to append zip to the name of course, Windows tells me that if I change a file name extension, the file might become unusable. Are you sure you want to change it? And yes, I do. Now I have a zip file. I will extract everything. And it will create a folder called test.docx. And in that folder, I can see that there are various XML files. I'll drag one of these XML documents to Visual Studio to edit it. I'm going to format the XML. And here you can see the markup for that document that I just created. I can modify this document. I can add hello world to the beginning of this paragraph. I'll save the document and then close it. Now if I come back to the directory test.docx and I select everything in the directory and I send that to a compressed zip folder. I'll call it test2.docx and now I can open test2.docx and I can see the new document with the inserted hello world at the beginning of the first paragraph. That's one way to modify an OpenXML document. You can change the extension to .zip, unzip it, change the contents, and then rezip it. But there's an easier way, a more convenient way to examine and modify OpenXML documents is to use the OpenXML Package Editor Power Tool for Visual Studio 2010. This is a free download from Microsoft that enables you to drag and drop OpenXML documents onto Visual Studio and then edit those OpenXML documents in a very convenient way in Visual Studio. You can download the OpenXML Package Editor Power Tool here. I will drag test.docx and drop it onto Visual Studio. The first thing that you see when you drag and drop this OpenXML document onto Visual Studio is this hierarchical control here. This hierarchical control shows the key parts of an OpenXML document. Here we can see the various parts in the document. Here is the document.xml that we modified manually just a bit ago. There's also a font table.xml part, settings.xml, styles.xml, and so on. I can right click on document.xml and edit it using the XML editor in Visual Studio. When Word or any of the other Office applications writes the XML, they don't, of course, write any insignificant white space. There is no formatting or indenting to the XML. So the first thing to do is to format the XML. I type Control E, Control D. 
that key combination works if you are using the C sharp bindings for keys in Visual Studio 2010. Quick point, one thing I like to do is to set an option to align all of the attributes for elements each on their own line. This enables you to, for instance, see all of the namespace prefixes much more easily. It also enables you to see all the attributes on an element where there are sometimes many attributes for a particular element. You can set that option by going to Tools, Options, Text Editor, XML, Formatting, and you'll want to check this radio button, Align Attributes Each on a Separate Line. It doesn't matter if, after editing the XML documents, if you save the XML documents with formatting or with indenting, Word will ignore the insignificant white space at the beginning of each of these lines. One of the key points about OpenXML documents is that OpenXML documents contain these parts, which are XML files within the zip file, and parts are related to other parts. That that is how you navigate through all the various parts in an OpenXML document. You use something called relationships. There are two varieties of relationships that we're going to look at right here. The first are relationships from the package to some parts. When using the OpenXML package editor, relationships are indicated using this chain icon as compared to the actual parts themselves, which are indicated using this particular icon. The less than character and the greater than character convey that there is XML inside of these parts. Here you can see these three relationships denote relationships from the main package to three parts in the document. There are relationships to the main document part, and there are relationships to two parts that record particular settings for the OpenXML document. Some of these settings are core and are common to all OpenXML documents, and some of these settings are specific to the particular application that you're using, be it Word, Excel, or PowerPoint. In addition, you can see up here, there are relationships from a part to another part. There are relationships from the main document part to the settings part, styles with effects, styles, theme, font table, and so on. If I click on one of these relationships and then press the F4 key to pull up the properties for the relationships, here in this properties window, we can see that there are five characteristics to each relationship. There is a relationship ID. I'll talk about this a bit more in a minute. There's also a source part and a target part. The source part is the from part in the relationship and the target part is the to part in the relationship. These relationships don't form a hierarchy, they actually form a directed graph. This means that multiple parts can be related to the same part. Let's see what that looks like. I'll edit this document, test.docx. I will insert an image into the main body of the document. I'll also insert the same image into the header of the document. I'll close the document and save it. And now if I drag test.docx to Visual Studio and look at it, I can see that there is a relationship from the main document part to this part media slash image one dot png. I can also see that there is a relationship from header one dot xml to media slash image one dot png. This characteristic that parts form a directed graph, in other words, that multiple parts can have a relationship to the same part is important. Otherwise, we would end up with duplicated images in the document. This is the end of this first screencast on open packaging conventions. We'll continue our examination of open packaging conventions in the following screencast.